good morning everyone so in the last class we have discussed about the generating function of legendary polynomial so legendary polynomial is denoted as pn of x in today's class we will discuss the orthogonality property of legendary polynomial so it says that the integration from minus 1 to 1 pn of x pm x dx is equal to 0 if m is not equal to n it is 2 by 2n plus 1 if m is equal to n so there are two cases when m is not equal to n and when m is equal to n for both the cases the proof i will put in the lecture notes which i am not going to discuss right now they are quite simple please do look by yourself i am just going to cover a few interesting exercises based on the orthogonality so to start with let us consider we have to prove that minus 1 to 1 integration x pn pn minus 1 dx is 2n by 4n square minus 1 so whenever integration comes into the picture it's clear that we have to use the orthogonality now what's next x is multiplied by pn so how does this x comes into the picture to, to solve this you have to recall the recurrence relation which says that n plus 1 pn plus 1 is 2n plus 1 x pn minus n pn minus 1 because now x pn is there so if you take x pn on left hand side it is n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 pn plus 1 plus n by 2n plus 1 pn minus 1 yes now you have to use the orthogonality because the right hand side pn minus 1 pn plus 1 is not at all multiplied with the <coughs> any function of x and you need x pn pn minus 1 so multiplying both the sides by pn minus 1 and integrating from minus 1 to 1 so this side becomes minus 1 to 1 pn plus 1 pn minus 1 dx plus pn minus 1 whole square dx yes now you use the orthogonality when m is not equal to n it is 0 when m is equal to n it is 2 by 2n plus 1 so this is equal to 0 because n minus 1 is not equal to n plus 1 and this side becomes 2 by 2n plus 1 and this is 2 by 2n plus 1 but n here is n minus 1 so 2 by 2 n minus 1 plus 1 so that gives you 4 by 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1 so we have to prove that it is equal to 2n sorry it has been multiplied by n n n by sorry it's not 2 it is n so this becomes 2n and that's why this is equal to 2n by 4n square minus 1 yes let's see the next two exercises please do try by themselves by yourself so the first one says that integration minus 1 to 1 x raised to the power k pn x dx is equal to 0 where k has the value 0 1 2 till n minus 1 now for these exercises i am not claiming that there is only a unique way there could be multiple ways you can use the recurrence relation you can use the Roderick's formula you can use the generating function generating function is not trivial here but at least the Roderick's formula or the reference relation may work but for most of the exercises I will discuss the approach using Roderick's formula so now minus 1 to 1 x raised to the power k pn dx this would be minus 1 to 1 x raised to the power k and from Roderick's formula it becomes 1 by 2 raised to the power n and factorial x square minus 1 
raised to the power n dx. Now I will use integration by parts. So 1 by 2 raised to the power n, n factorial is a constant. Now the first term is x raised to the power k and integration of dn by d x raised to the power n. So if you integrate it, it becomes dn minus 1 dx n minus 1 x square minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 to 1 minus differentiation of x raised to the power k so k x raised to the power k minus 1 then dn minus 1 and x square minus 1 raised to the power n dx now from here onwards try to solve it by yourself it's quite easy now the observation here is that when you differentiate n minus 1 times x square minus 1 raised to the power n then you will always have the term x minus 1 or you can say x square minus 1 and when you substitute in x square minus 1 you substitute x is equal to 1 or minus 1 it would always 0 when you differentiate n times then only you will get a constant term less than that you will always have so this is equal to 0. Yes, so if you want to write it in a simplified form, it is minus k by 2 raised to the power n, n factorial x raised to the power and then now the next observation is to integrate it further, you don't want this multiple x raised to the power k minus 1. So when you differentiate once, when you uh, sorry integrate once then you will get access to a k minus 1 so if you keep integrating then in the end you don't have you will have access to the power 0 yes so if you integrate k minus 1 times then you will have minus 1 raised to the power k k factorial 2 raised to the power n n factorial and this you don't have x raised to the power 0 and this is d n minus k now if you integrate it again then it becomes d n minus k minus 1 you will get d n minus k when you integrate k minus 1 times and then this integration is there so integration of d n minus k and x square minus 1 raised to the power n so this is d x n minus k minus 1 then x square minus 1 raised to the power n and minus 1 to 1. Now again you are differentiating n minus k minus 1 times x square minus 1 raised to the power n. So for sure all the terms as x square minus 1 when you put x is equal to 1 or minus 1 this will again would be equal to 0. So that's why the value of this integration would be equal to 0. The next question is minus 1 to 1 p n x log 1 minus x. We will use the same logic which we have used here. Just do it for the practice. Let me change the color. So now minus 1 to 1 p n x log 1 minus x dx. So again you will use the Roderick's formula. So this is 1 by 2 raised to the power n n factorial. Then log 1 minus x is there. And dn by dx raised to the power n x square minus 1 raised to the power n dx. Again you will use the integration by parts. So if you use the integration by parts. And you have to do it n times. So if you do it n times then you will get the same approach which we use you will get there you got minus 1 raised to the power k here you get minus 1 raised to the power n 2 raised to the power n n factorial the first term would always become 0 then when you integrate dn by dx raised to the power n n times it simply becomes x square minus 1 raised to the power n and then comes the n time differentiation of log 1 minus x dx yes now quickly try to compute what is n time differentiation of log 1 minus x dx so 
d by dx of log 1 minus x is minus 1 minus x so implies if you differentiate n times then you will get because next time it comes to be minus 1 then minus 2 and so on so n minus 1 factorial minus sign is there and 1 minus x raised to the power n verified by yourself now if you substitute the values back then you will have minus 1 rest to the power n plus 1 n minus 1 factorial 2 rest to the power n n factorial minus 1 1 then x square minus 1 rest to the power n so you can write it as x minus 1 rest to the power n x plus 1 rest to the power n divided by 1 minus x rest to the power n and dx so you can take minus 1 rest to the power n common and it simply becomes minus 1 then 2 rest to the power n n minus 1 factorial and n factorial cancel out so this is n and integration x plus 1 rest to the power n dx this is the integration of x plus 1 rest to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 and the limits are minus 1 to 1 when you put minus 1 it's 0 for 1 it is 2 rest to the power n plus 1 divided by 2 rest to the power n n and n plus 1 2 rest to the power n cancels out so it is minus 2 by n n plus 1 yes very interesting question let's try two more question try to solve them by yourself first so minus 1 to 1 1 minus x square p 12 dash p 10 dash dx so if you if i start with this one and if i do integration by parts so integration by part means that so this is minus 1 to 1 1 minus x square p 12 dash as first function and p 10 as the second function p 10 dash so integration by parts would be 1 minus x square p 12 dash p 10 minus 1 to 1 so minus 1 to 1 both are there and 1 minus x square coefficient is there so this would become 0 and integration minus 1 to 1 then 1 minus x square p 12 dash and its differentiation then p 10 dx now let's try to see what is this differentiation is so 1 minus x square p 12 dash n dash is 1 minus x square p 12 double dash minus p 12 dash now you need to recognize this this is legendary equation instead of p n i wrote p 12 so n is 12 so this would be n n plus 1 and p 12 so n is 12 dot 13 and p12 this is the most important trick now rest is fine so you replace minus 12 13 p12 p10 and dx now using the orthogonality property this is equal to 0 last question i need to compute 0 1 x p7 p8 dx the problem is very easy the only trick is you have integration from 0 to 1 yes so we did it already but just there is a difference in the integration so you have to use the same x is there so x pn is n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 pn plus 1 plus n by 2n plus 1 pn minus 1 it means your integration from 0 to 1 p7 p8 
dx now the important observation is p7 is odd function p8 is even function and x is odd so odd odd even and even and that's why you can write it is half minus 1 to 1 x p7 p8 dx and now you can use the orthogonality so if you substitute the values of x p7 so this gives you half minus 1 to 1 and it becomes 9 by 17 p9 plus 8 by 17 p7 multiplied by p7 and dx now using orthogonality the integration of p7 p9 is 0 so you'll have only p7 so half minus 1 to 1 8 by 17 and p7 square dx now substitute the values using orthogonality so this comes out to be 4 by 17 multiplied by 2 by 15 which is 8 by 255 so the only topic a small topic which remains is legendary series that we will discuss in the next class thank you